During the 1800s, Cuban culture became the subject of highly regarded paintings. Spanish artists introduced a body of work that came to be known as Costumbrista. These works focused on everyday life in Cuba and a highly idolized version of Cuban plantations and also the lives of Afro-Cuban slaves. One of the Spanish artists was Victor Patricio Landaluce and he produced some of the most famous works from this movement. His painting Cutting Sugar Cane shows slaves in a field gathered around a wagon bearing sugar cane under a sunny Cuban sky. This was a reality that all Afro-Cuban slaves had to go through during the 1800s. So this work of art is titled The 3rd of May, 1808, painted by one of the most influential painters of the 18th century, Francisco Goya, and he enjoyed enormous success during his lifetime. His work is often associated with the Romantic movement, and he is considered one of the last great old masters and as a forefather of modern art. So this piece is a politically charged masterpiece that honors the Spanish resistance against French armies during the Napoleonic Wars. And this groundbreaking work is what set a new precedent for how the horrors of war were depicted in art and it ultimately influenced Western art and culture. Painting is one type of Mexican folk art. In fact, painting is among the oldest art forms in Mexico found in ancient cave paintings in Baja California along the Pacific coast. People like the Maya and Aztecs also created painting images, including murals on buildings. Mexican art is special, vibrant, colorful, and often just plain mesmerizing because it is derived from long-standing traditions that the native populations have kept alive within their communities. Art as a way of life is the exception and not the rule for most people. Pablo Amaringo was a Peruvian artist. He is known for his colorful depictions of his visions from drinking ayahuasca, a entheogenic brew. The outside world was introduced to Pablo Amaringo's work with the book Ayahuasca Visions, the religious iconography of a Peruvian shaman. Since then, he's been recognized as one of the world's great visionary artists. His paintings capture the spirits, subaquatic cities, celestial realms, and extraterrestrial beings of great wisdom. Pablo founded the Usco Ayar Amazonian School of Art. He was dedicated in preserving the ways of life and indigenous knowledge of the Amazon. Colombia has a wide range of art styles that date back to 3,500 years that contain rich history. It has developed from Spanish Baroque paintings to Quimbaya gold craftwork, which is pre-Columbian gold work on statuettes, then to painters such as Alejandro Obregón, a painter known for lyrical Americanism, to now the most known sculptor, Fernando Portero. Pre-Columbian art was believed to contain a lot of ceramic art, which had patterns inspired by animals such as snakeskin in 3100 BC. Then around 325 BCE, Gold work became very popular, which lured the Spanish to the area which is now known as Colombia. Once the Spanish arrived, artwork took a pivotal change and started to develop various styles. By the 20th century, artists like Fernando Portero have changed the way art is looked. The style Porterismo is his signature style in which he depicts people in large and exaggerated volumes, which has made him one of the most recognizable artists. Colombia always has artwork full of history and is now a huge part of their culture. The fine arts of Argentina historically found their inspiration in Europe, particularly in France and Spain, but the turbulence and complexity of Argentina national life have also found expression in the arts. In literature, the modernismo movement of the late 19th century and the ultraismo of the early 20th were both influenced by the French symbolists and Pyrenesian poets. By composing verses of unconventional meter and by using unusual imagery and symbolism, such poets such as Jorge Luis Borges hoped to draw attention to the beauty of the Spanish language. Borges went on to become one of the most innovative fiction writers of Latin America. He paved the way for experimental works of the later 20th century, such as the anti-novel Hopscotch by the Argentinian novelist Julio Cortázar. Composers of the early 20th centuries contributed to a nationalist revival in music by adapting folk themes to classical forms. Painters and sculptors studied in Italy and France and took the academic, impressionist, and Cubist styles back to Argentina.